I won't spoil anything major for Tower of God. All right. Listen, I had an original script and video where I said Tower of God was playing born shonen, but from Korea. So, uh, but how do you say that in Korean? And the only reason why I didn't post that video and why I haven't been outside in a week is because after episode 12, I've been speed running all 500 chapters of the manhwa. And now that I finally caught up, I kind of feel bad about the original script. Not saying that I was wrong, but that the original conclusion that this just being another run of the mill Korean shonen might have been a bit hasty. So here's my journey with Tower of God. When Tower of God was first announced, everyone lost their mind. This was supposed to be the next big thing. I mean, it's hype enough that a Korean webtoon was being translated into an anime, which opens new doors for the market, but for a webtoon to also be godlike, just as good as One Piece, one guy said, just as good as One Piece. And when the first episode dropped, I was kinda into it. A boy and a girl living in a cave and she is teleported away to try and fulfill her desires, at which point he follows after her because he can't think of a life without her. And after arriving to the tower, BOM can't find Rachel. And this explained that he is inside the tower with many floors, tests, and environments, and monsters. And if he ever wants to see Rachel, he must climb the tower until he reaches her. And the only way to do that is to figure out how to beat the monster right in front of him and crack the black ball. Now halfway through the first episode I was actually excited. A mysterious tower with hundreds of floors, each with his own unique environment, monsters and trials to figure out in order to progress. I was honestly getting Made in Abyss vibes. I liked Made in Abyss because it felt so mystical. It was an unexplored world full of possibilities, rich environments, and the viewer had no idea what would be on each level of the Abyss. No idea what dangers would await or what characters we'd meet. As our characters dove further into the Abyss, the world slowly opened up to us and we got to learn more and about what Made in Abyss is about. That's what I was getting from the first episode of Tower of God. I thought it was going to be like Made in Abyss, but going up instead of down. I thought it was going to be a mystical adventure full of intrigue and wonder as we figure out just what the tower was, but I was wrong, because we kind of learned everything right here in the first couple episodes. The tower is a less mystical weird place but a kingdom ruled by rulers with cities and, uh, and structures. Its magic system is Sun Shui, the water that gives energy to the tower. That's the Black March, one of the strongest weapons you can find in one of the 13 month series or whatever. And this test right here, this test where the only way to survive is to realize that you need to jump inside the monster's mouth and attack it from inside because it's just too strong to take on directly. Well, that was the last test like that because all of the other ones are currently about fighting each other. When I say I was taken aback, I was stunned. The show just easily explained everything I could possibly ever want to know about the tower. And it's no longer mysterious, the fun's gone. And it moves away from the creative tests, figuring out how to deal with an overwhelming force while trying to break a ball that's harder than steel, and moves on to almost a straight up tournament art. But the thing about the fights, the most confusing part, is that the fights aren't good. Like you have a character take out a sword and the other character just floats in the air as grass slowly rises. You have two girls fighting each other and the entire fight is just her going for low sweeps and a girl jumping back like these aren't interesting fights. These are the kind of fights I would expect in a non-action show where the action isn't the focus. So is this a non-action anime? And the main character is so bland. Like I get making the main character a dry plank of wood so that they can make the biggest character development later on become the most badass main character we all want him to be. But I'm tired of these characters being the most boring plain characters just to justify some later progression. You don't have to write your character so uninteresting for the sake of development. Bomb sucks. I, it, he's just boring. And it was at this point that I almost dropped the show. I just couldn't see what was supposed to be so good about the show. And people swore up and down that it gets better later. But this isn't later. This is right now. This is what I have to deal with right now. But I said, you know what? Everything else has either been canceled or delayed. So let me just, I got nothing left to watch. Right, let's just keep watching. And you know what? It does start to get more interesting. As I kept watching, Bam starts to develop a bit of independence from Rachel. And while the tower has become less interesting to me and Sensory has become less interesting, I have become a bit more interested in the family and politics. Learning about the princesses of Jihad and the politics around the families have piqued my interest a bit. The fights still suck and I feel like the tests still haven't been as creative as the first one, being a lot more straightforward and less creative, but I'm working with it. And this is where my original video was going to end around episode 7 or 8. Saying that while the family and politics are a bit interesting, it's still just a kind of men's show, you know? It doesn't bring anything new to the table, nothing particularly interesting. The characters are eh, the fights are eh, the environments are eh. But as I said, enough enough to watch. But I kept watching, and when I finally got to episode 12, let me just say this. Fuck this stupid ass bitch, you ungrateful cunt. You worthless, and I can't wait until you die and burn in hell, you stupid. Or, ah!
the anger, the the disgust. That hurt me. That that fucking hurt. I want that character dead. I need this character to die. And after seeing that, I, I couldn't wait next week to see the last episode. I immediately started reading the manhwa, and now that I'm fully caught up, this is how I learned to love Tower of God. As I said a bit earlier in the video, it really was the politics for me. Yeah, the fights don't really start getting good until later in the series. And no, you're wrong, Bomb does not get better. Bomb gets stronger, not better. Bomb is still a naive, stupid, easy, trusting, and clingy character all the way up until recent chapters. All the way up until like chapter 450 or season 3 of the manhwa. And the games. The games are less puzzles and more similar to, say, the dodgeball game in Hunter x Hunter. The games in Tower of God aren't complicated, nor do they require a galaxy brain to understand, but the games themselves add a twist to the fight so it's not just a straight up fight. It allows characters who aren't that strong to compete and use their intellect to win, instead of just straight up beating the other guy to death. And now that I know that, I feel like the first half of the series really didn't do this justice because I feel like it very much made it seem like the games would be more like puzzles or that the environments and creatures will play a bigger role in the series when it's less about the mystery of the tower but more about the people itself. The history of certain areas, the struggles and problems that they had to go through, what the characters are willing to put up with and the sides that they take. It's about Jihad and his 10 families, and is he truly a just king or is he a tyrant? Does power corrupt all or is it truly up to the individual and what he does with it? The princesses of Jihad, the irregulars, watching the chess pieces fall where they may and unveiling the skeletons in everyone's closet and also the talks of destiny. Many characters can see into the future to some degree. Many characters believe that they have a purpose and will live or die by that. If you are chosen to be the king, you will be the king. And if you are chosen to be a worthless piece of trash, you will be a worthless piece of trash. And it's interesting to see how that plays out. Will you fight your destiny and force yourself to be the main character? Or will you follow your path and play the role that you were born to do? Are you just a stepping stone for something greater? And if you are, will you allow that new wave to take over or fight against it with all your might? That's how I learned to love Tower of God. It wasn't the games or the tower itself, but the people. Seeing how far someone's resolve can be pushed until they're forced to come to the reality of their actions. Seeing factions rise and fall and which characters are willing to throw their lives away for the chance to stand for what they believe in. That's what kept me reading Tower of God for fucking almost 500 chapters. And like I said, the fights do get better, characters are shooting fucking Kamehameha beams, it's like this stuff gets intense, and it's fun to read. <laughs> so to the people that can't really get into Tower of God, I get it. I don't think the first half is that good, and I was ready to write off the anime as another generic shonen, but from Korea. And that's maybe 80 chapters of what I would consider a mediocre series nothing special. But having watched the anime which compresses most of that into 13 episodes, and being captivated by the twists at the end of the anime, that's what gave me the drive to binge over 400 chapters of this series. And not everyone can do that. Not everyone wants to do that. Not everyone will enjoy what Tower of God is about, because it can take some of us so long to actually get to the point where it actually starts to click. Some may enjoy it from the beginning, and some might not even find the politics that interesting. So is this the next best series to revolutionize the anime industry with its groundbreaking story? No, no, calm down guys. It's hard to answer the question if Tower God is overrated. It's ambitious, I'll give it that, but at the end of the day it's just a good series for me. Not the critically acclaimed masterpiece some might have made you thought, something to be analyzed and critiqued for years to come like the heavy hitters in anime. But if you're able to get attached to the series, there's definitely fun to be had here. And if not, well, life's too short to invest over 100 chapters to a series just to see if you like it, when you already feel like it's not for you. So don't feel bad about skipping out on this, if it's already not clicking for you. Thanks to anyone who watched the video all the way through. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to drop a like and sub to my channel. And you can also follow me on Twitter. Peace. Thanks for watching.